All right, I know you guys are super excited about studying dental anatomy, so I'm gonna continue the series on 300 dental anatomy facts to ace the boards, and this video will be all about molars. So let's get started. We're gonna get started on the maxillary first molar, and we're gonna focus on some aspects of the occlusal. So the occlusal outline form is gonna be rhomboidal. So here we are. We've got a rhomboidal outline. And then you also have to know about these angles, about which angles are acute and which are obtuse. So the next point is that the mesiofacial and distolingual angles from the occlusal outline are gonna be acute. So here we've got the acute angles, and then we've got the obtuse angles, which are gonna be the mesiolingual and the distofacial. So those are going to be the fat angles. And these are the important angles to know about that they usually test on because we're going to have those angles make up the oblique ridge. Okay, the maxillary first molar tends to taper toward the facial rather than toward the lingual. So this is the big one. The buccal embrasure is larger than the lingual. And the most prone part of these of the, the facial and lingual surfaces of molars are the lingual of the maxillary and the facial of the mandibular. So lingual of maxillary and facial of mandibular. Okay, now we're going to get into the roots. The largest root of the maxillary first molar is, of course, the palatal. The smallest root of the maxillary molar is the distal buccal. So remember the mesial buccal root needs room for that MB2 so it will tend to be bigger than the distal buccal. So that's kind of a way to remember uh, which root is bigger between the mesial buccal and the distal buccal. Okay so here we have a facial view of the tooth and here we see the facial view from a facial view, the apex of the lingual root is in line with the facial groove of the tooth. So here we see the palatal uh, root or lingual root and it's right in line there with the facial groove. And then when viewed from the lingual, so here's the lingual view, uh, the palatal root is in line with the midpoint of the mesiodistal diameter. And when a fourth pulp canal is present in a maxillary first molar, it's usually located in the mesiobuccal canal. Okay, now we're going to get into the furcations. Three furcations. There's a mesial, a buccal, and a distal. And they'll sometimes ask about the furcations and uh, the size of the furcations. So of the three furcations of a maxillary first molar, the mesial is the closest to the cervical line. So here we've got the cervical line, and we're going to look at the furcation in relation to that cervical line. How far away is it? And so you see here the distance of the furcations from the cervical line goes uh, mesial, then buccal, then distal. And so the further you or the more distal you go, the further the furcation gets. Okay, So of the three furcations, the distal is going to be the furthest from the cervical line, and the mesial is going to be the closest. Okay, now we're going to focus on the oblique ridge. Uh, you tend to get a lot of questions on the oblique ridge if they're going to test you on the maxillary first molar. So the oblique ridge of the maxillary first molar forms the distal boundary of a central fossa. This is kind of a tough thing to visualize and so a picture is going to help a lot here. So we've got the dis, the oblique ridge here and then we've got the central fossa right here. And so if you move, if you imagine you're a little person in the distal pit and you're going to walk towards the distal, you're going to hit you're going to run right into the oblique ridge. And so that's the distal boundary of the central pit. And we talked about this already, but 
Um, it's good to mention again the obtuse corners coincide with the direction of the oblique ridge. And the center of the oblique ridge is at the same level as the marginal ridge. So the height of the marginal ridge is the same as the height of the center of the oblique ridge. The oblique ridge connects the mesiolingual and distal facial cusps. The mesiolingual cusp of the maxillary molar occludes in the central fossa of the mandibular molars. So mesiolingual right here. That cusp is going to occlude in the central fossa of the mandibular molar. Okay, now we're going to get into dimensions. Now, maxillary first molar has the greatest facial lingual diameter uh, for the crown of all teeth. So, think of the cusp of carabelli here. So, we're going from uh, buccal to lingual here, and it's going to have the greatest dimension. And we've got the cusp of carabelli there, and we'll use that to kind of remind us that. That's the longest in that dimension. That tooth is the longest in that dimension. The maxillary first molar is the closest in size facial, lingually, and mesiodistally of any maxillary posterior tooth. So here, uh, we have to be very careful about what they're asking. So on the test, they could ask maxillary posterior teeth. They could ask of any tooth. They could ask of just posterior teeth. If they ask of just posterior teeth, then you, know, you have to take into consideration that they're including the uppers and the lowers. And so we'll get into some of that in a bit. Okay, the maxillary first molar has a wider mesial distal width toward the facial than toward the lingual. So here in this picture, you can see the line is longer on the mesial distal than on the or is longer on the facial than it is on the lingual. Okay, we'll get into cusps here. The uh, distal lingual cusp of the maxillary molar is the only one that is not part of the cusp triangle. So you'll occasionally see this question, style of question about asking about the uh, cusp triangle. So here we've got the cusp triangle. This, you can see this distal lingual cusp, not part of it. And then the mesiolingual cusp of the maxillary first molar is going to be the largest and the longest cusp. So uh, mesiolingual, and you can kind of see it peeking out here. You get a tooth that is most likely to be forced into the maxillary sinus during an extraction is the maxillary first molar. So you can see the floor of the sinus right there. And the maxillary first molar has a distal concavity that can pose special problems in matrix placement. Okay, the crown, so we've got a first and a second right here. The crown of the maxillary first molar has a shorter distolingual groove. So here's the distolingual groove. And here's the distal lingual groove. We're going to compare these two. And the first molar has a shorter distal lingual groove than the second molar. Okay, we're going to get into the second molar, second maxillary molar. So, uh, same idea as for the first molar, that distal lingual cusp is not part of the cusp triangle. And then, if the, as you move posteriorly, the distal cusp gets progressively smaller, and so sometimes on that second molar, you won't even have a distal lingual cusp. If that's the case, then you'll have a, a three cusp type heart shape. And you see that a lot with the third molar. Okay, on to the roots. The roots of the maxillary second molar tend to be less divergent and they have a greater distal inclination. So here we've got the first molar and look at how uh, divergent those are. And if you come to the second molar, you can see a little more squished together. You know, as you're moving towards the posterior, you're kind of running out of room up there. You've got that 
third molar scrunching against there. And uh, that's kind of the way I think of it. As you move back, you're running out of room and these roots have to kind of be squished together. This tooth is sitting against a premolar and so there's plenty of room for the roots to stretch out. The cross-sectional outline at the cervical is roughly triangular for the permanent maxillary second molar. So the, the cross-sectional outline at the cervical is roughly triangular. Okay, we're moving down to the mandibular teeth and we're gonna focus on the first molar and let's look at, at the occlusal. Okay, the, the groove pattern for the mandibular first is considered a Y or uh, you can try to pronounce that, I can't. But um, here we've got that Y sh uh, shape to it through these grooves. And then the occlusal outline of a mandibular first molar is a pentagon. This was uh, this comes from like a monkey or something like that. But uh, so we've got the Y shape, and then we've also got a, pe a pentagon shaped occlusal outline. Now you got that distal cusp right there that kind of forms the the point of the, the pentagon. Okay, more on the cusps. We're gonna look at the cusp size here. So. The smallest cusp in the mandibular first molar is going to be the distal cusp, and the largest is going to be the mandibular, or is going to be the mesiofacial. So, on most of these teeth, you'll find a pattern that the mesial half of the tooth is going to be larger than the distal in terms of cusps. And uh, in this case, we've got mesial buccal is largest than mesial lingual then distal lingual, then distal buccal, then distal. Okay, here we get into dimensions. You see there's a lot of questions on dimensions of the mandibular first molar. And you'll actually find that there's, they're kind of just like a, a lot of the same type of question. So it's the same question asked in different ways. And I mentioned earlier, you have to be very careful about what we're comparing the dimension to. So you hear, you see here I have any tooth, mandibular, posterior, all molars. So let's take a look at this. So the mandibular first molar, it has the largest mesial, mesiodistal crown dimension of any other tooth. So think of, to remember that, think of the tooth having three buccal cusps. So you're gonna have to travel a long distance mesiodistally to cover that distance of the three cusps. And then this is like the same thing, but we're just comparing it in a different way. Mandibular molars are the only mandibular teeth that are wider mesiodistally than facial lingually. And you know, it doesn't matter what we, what we compare it to because it's any tooth. It's the biggest of any tooth. So they could ask about mandibular. They could say, you know, ask which posterior tooth. And so mandibular molars are the only posterior teeth that are wider mesiodistally than facial lingually. And then they could ask just of molars, which would include uppers and lowers. And the mandibular first molar has the greatest mesiodistal diameter of all molars. So mesiodistally, it's gonna be the greatest of any tooth of the mandibulars, of the posteriors, of all molars. Okay, now we're gonna look at the dimension in the facial lingual. So the mandibular first molar has the largest facial lingual crown dimension of any other mandibular tooth. So here is an example where you really gotta be careful because they could put, you know, in this, in this, in the answer choices, they could have the maxillary first molar. And we know that the maxillary first molar does have the greatest facial lingual diameter uh, of any tooth. And, um, but here, if they asked about the mandibular tooth, you'd have to be very conscious of that, be very aware of that. So here we're basically comparing the first and the second. And the first is going to be larger facial lingually than the second. Okay, now we're going to look at occlusal gingivally. 
the mandibular first molar is the largest occluso uh, cervical crown dimension. 